This lecture will show a process on how to analyze solution curves in IVP of autonomous equations. First, we'll talk about phase line. So what is phase line? Phase lines is a visual description of solution trains as t goes to infinity for the solutions to autonomous differential equations. Again, t goes to infinity is mean analyzing the end behavior of the solutions to um, IVB problems. First, we're going to draw a vertical line representing the y-axis. And this is the phase line. So this is the y-axis, right? And then you will uh, identify critical values or equilibrium solutions by solving the equation f of zero equals to zero. So solving f of zero equals to zero, you find all the critical values or equilibrium solutions and you mark them on the phase line. Let's say we'll have two equilibrium solutions, y1 and y2. Okay. And the next thing is you want to identify the trend of the trend of f of the function f using uh, upward arrow or downward arrow on the intervals between critical values or uh, equilibrium solutions using um, the observations that we observed in the motivation problem. So what does it mean? That means if I pick a value y0 on this interval, again, this is go from negative infinity, positive infinity, this is negative infinity. If I pick a y0 here, and then if I compute f of y0, if it's positive, then I have a solution that is an increasing function. So I have an increasing function solutions. So what that means, that means in my phase line, I will have a upward arrow here. Okay. Now, if I pick a point in between y1 and y2, and I evaluate this point y0 using the function f, and if it's negative, then I know that my solution curve will be a decreasing functions. If it's a de decreasing functions, then I will use a downward arrow. Okay. And then again, if I pick a point y0, and f of y0, let's say is also decreasing or less than zero, f of y0 less than zero, then I know that I will have a decreasing function as my solution curve. So again, I will still have a downward arrow. So this vertical line here is my face line. Okay, so using this phase line, I know that if I start, if the initial value is in this interval, then my solution curve, which is y of t, will be a, an increasing function. If I start at a point between y1 and y0, I have a decreasing solution curve. And similarly, if I have f of y0 here, when y0 is in this interval, then I have another decreasing solution curve. Okay. Keep in mind that y1 and y2 are equilibrium solutions. All right. Now I know how to identify equilibrium solutions. I know how to create a phase line Let's talk about types of equilibria or types of equilibrium solutions. So there's three different types of equilibrium solutions. So the first type is called asymptotically stable or 
it can be called as a sink. So you have an asymptotically stable or a sink as an equilibrium solutions. If other solutions with, you know, an initial value y0, where y0 equals to c, then the limit of y of t, when t goes to infinity, equals to c. What does that mean? That means if this is my phase line, this is my c, right? Equilibrium solutions, this is c right here. If I pick a value, an initial value y0, that is around c, then my solution will go, um, go towards c. So then this is c's equilibrium solutions here, and then the solution curve will go down c. So this is y of t, this is y of t, and again, c is the equilibrium solution, y of t equals to c. So as you see, this is a sink, right? Because everything around it go toward this line, this equilibrium solution, y of t equals to, t to c. All right, the next type is called asymptotically unstable or a source. If other solutions with initial value y0, where y0 is near c, then the limit of y of t is not c when t goes to infinity. What does that mean? That means I have my face line and then c, okay? And then if I pick a point that is around C, then the solution that goes through this point will go away from C. It's not approaching these uh, solutions that goes through an initial point that is close to C will go away from C. So this is called again an asymptotically unstable equilibrium or it can be called as a source. How about the last type? The last type is um, an equilibrium solution is called semi-stable or a node, right? If all the solutions with initial value y0, where y0 is near c, then either will have the um, the solution curve will go towards C and on one side and it will go away from C on the other side. Okay, either of these two situations, these two scenarios happen, then the equilibrium y equals to C is semi-stable or a node. An example is, in this example I have C, right? And then if I pick a point around C, let's say upward, I have go away from C. And then if I pick a point uh, under C, then this function here will go towards C. So you see the different approaches from different points here. So one go away from C and one go towards C. Or in a, a different scenario, you can have, um, the reverse where this is also C, right? And then if you pick a point above, it's gonna go towards C. If you pick a point below C, it's gonna go away from C. So either this scenario is a semi-stable or a node. And again, these are three different types of equilibrium solutions. Y of t equals to a constant c. All right, well, let's look at the example number three. So first you wanna draw a phase line for each autonomous equation and then classify the stability of equilibria. That means draw a phase line and then identify um, the type of equilibrium solutions. 
So the equation, this equation is a, a an autonomous equation, right? And remember, when we want to analyze solutions for autonomous equation, we always want to find the equilibrium solution. So f of y equals to 4 minus y squared, y squared. Okay. So in order to find equilibrium solutions, we need to set f of y equal to 0. That means you set 4 minus y squared times y squared equal to 0. That will give you y equal to 0 and y equals 2 plus and minus 2. So you have three solutions for these equations. That means we have three equilibrium solutions. All right. Now let's draw a phase line. So a phase line, a vertical line, and this is a y. Okay. And then I have zero here, and then two here, and then negative two here. Okay. So these three are equilibrium solutions. All right. So I want to know uh, if I pick a point on this, in this interval, let's say three, what is f of three? So f of three will be um, negative because three is nine, right? Four minus nine, negative. This is positive, so it's going to be negative. If f of three is negative, then you have a decreasing functions. Now, if I pick a point at in between 0 and 2, let's say 1, then f of 1 is 1, 4 minus 1, 3 is going to be positive. I don't need to know exact value. I just want to know the sign. If it's positive, then arrow in this interval. Okay. Now pick another point. This interval, negative 1. Negative 1, then f of negative 1 will be, so negative 1 squared is positive. Negative 1 is positive. 4 minus 1 is 3, so it's still positive. That means we have, we still have a upward arrow. Okay. Well, last interval, negative 3. If negative three, the f of negative three will be nine, four minus nine is negative, is negative three squared is positive, so it's negative. That means I have a downward arrow. All right, so if I look at these three equilibriums and I want to classify these three equilibrium solutions, look at the phase line, I know that this is the first type, right? It's a source or is a, asymptotically stable because if you pick any points around this um, value y equals to 2 this function y equals to 2 all the equation all the solution will go towards this equilibrium solution so that's why this is a uh, I would say um, asymptotically totally stable or this is a source a sink sink is because everything it's just sinking down there right and then if we look at this equilibrium solutions uh, in one way solution curve go away from this point on another side, solution curve go toward this point. So this is an example of semi-stable or a, a node. Now, if you look at this equilibrium solutions in both sides, solution curves go away from this equilibrium solutions. That means is a 
um, asymptotically. unstable or is is a source okay so a sink a node and you have a source just look at the face line so there are some remarks uh first Based on the X, the uniqueness and existence and uniqueness theorem, the solution to IVP of um, autonomous equations is unique. So in this case, uh, because this is autonomous, so I think that shouldn't be T here. So this should be just f of y. f of y, right? dy over dt of f of y is unique. Because y should be, um, continuous and defined. And uh, the, and based on the existence and uniqueness, you know that the IVP um, of autonomous equations, you always have a unique solutions. And solutions are strictly increasing, decreasing, or constants. As you can see it here, right? Either increasing or decreasing or constants on their entire solution interval. Okay. And as t goes to positive or negative infinity, the solution approaches to the next equilibrium or to positive or negative infinity as an exponential rate. What does that mean? That means if you look at um, like one point here, right? And this, if this is the um, initial value, then you have this is as the solutions. And this solutions here will approach is approaching to the next equilibrium solutions okay or if you pick this um, initial value and you will have a solution curve that looks like this that means this solution curve here as t goes to infinity is approaches to negative infinity so as t goes to infinity the solution curve either uh, approaches to the next equilibrium solution or to positive infinity or negative infinity. Again, this is autonomous equations. Solution to autonomous equations um, should be unique based on the existence and unique theorem. Well, the next things um, we want to discuss is the concavity of solution curves, right? Previously, we learned that the solutions are either increasing or decreasing. How about uh, the concavity of the solutions, whether you have a solution where it's increasing and then after one point, uh, it's still increasing, but it's concave down and after one point, it's concave up like this. So these are the three. Um, and maybe when you have a decreasing functions concave down and then after some point it's concave up. So these are the four possible solutions for autonomous equations. All right, so let's remind us we have um, autonomous equation y prime equals to f of y. Okay, in order to determine the concavity of a function always you want to look at y double prime right so y double prime will be um well using chain rule you have f of f prime of y times y prime and because y prime equals to f of y so we can replace y prime by f of y well that means the second derivative of the function y 
depends on the first derivative and, uh, of the function f of y multiplied to the function f of y. So um, remember, in order to determine the concavity, we just need to determine the sign of y double prime. So because the y double prime is the products of y, f of y, and f prime of y, then the sign of y double prime will be positive when f prime of y and f of y have the same sign. And then y double prime will be negative when f prime of y and f of y have different signs. So same signs mean both positive or both negative, right? Or different signs mean one is negative, one is positive, or one is positive, one is negative. Okay. So this will tell us how we would, um, in which way we want to approach in order to determine the sign of y double prime. So if we can define the sign of f of y and f of y prime, put them in the same table, then we will be able to determine the sign of y double prime. Okay. And it's, it's, it's straightforward in this case. So in order to determine the concavity and the inflection lines, we first, we have to find um, f prime of y equals to zero, right? Because we need to find the sign of f y prime. And then we know that we need to find the equilibrium solutions when we take f y equals to zero. So by using those informations, uh, finding other critical values, finding other inflection points, put them in the same table, we'll be able to identify the sign of um, the concavity or the sign of a second derivative. So let's look at this example here. Well, he wants to determine the concavity of the solutions, right, of this autonomous equation. And remember that this is the equation that we have dealt with before. Uh, we already found that in order to find equilibrium solutions for minus y squared, y squared equals to zero. And we found that y equals to zero, y equals to plus and minus two. Okay, so this is f of y. Now we have to find f prime of y equals to um, negative two y times y squared plus using the dot product, uh, using the uh, product rule, we can find the f prime of y multiply to four minus y squared times two y squared. And this will be negative four y cubed plus four y squared minus, oh, this is gonna be two y. Eight y minus two y cubed. And this is only two. Okay, when you combine them, you have negative four y cubed plus a y. And again, you want to set f of y prime equals to zero to find inflection point, right? So that would be, um, 4y and you have negative y squared plus 2 equals to 0. So then y equals to 0 and y equals to plus minus square root of 2. Okay. So we have y prime and we have, so we have, this is where f of y equals to 0. 
And this is the value when f prime of y equals to zero. Now we have to come up with a, a table, right? When you have, um, let's say, negative infinity to two, negative two, zero, positive two, positive infinity, okay? And then you will have, in between this value, you will have negative square root of two and positive square root of two um, and go to infinity, okay? So, and on the first, you have f double prime, and then here you have f prime. So I want us to see the sign, and the sign will be So we know that from negative infinity to negative two, the sign of um, f prime, the sign of f, so this is f of y, and this is f prime of y, okay, all right, we want to have this here. I want to make it down here, down here first at two. And I have right here, right here. And I have a line at zero. And I have it here. And down here, I will have the combined f double prime of y. Okay, let's look at f prime of y from negative infinity to negative two, f, f, f of y is a function, this is the function of f of y. And we know that uh, from negative two uh, to negative two, you can play, uh, you can, Pick a point, negative three, plug it in here, learn that from um, negative two to two, all the signs are positive. And from two to positive infinity is a negative. Now we look at f prime of y. f prime of y is this function. This is a cubic functions, and let me remind you, a cubic functions with negative leading coefficients, it will look like this. Okay, that means this is first zero, second zero, and the third zero. And now that this is negative square root of two, I should assume that this should be zero. And that this should be positive square root of two, right? And as you, as you can see that from negative infinity to negative two, the sign of this function is here, of f prime of y is positive. And from negative infinity to zero, the sign of f prime of y should be negative. From zero to uh, square root of two, the sign of f prime of y should be positive. And from square root of two to positive, the sign of f prime of y should be negative. All right. Now I can combine these two signs to get the derivative of the second derivative. To get uh, this shouldn't be f prime of y, it should be f should be y double prime, is a sign of y double prime. So combine negative and negative, I have negative, positive, positive, oh, this is negative, positive, 
negative and positive. So what does it tell you? That tells you, this table tells you on the interval from negative infinity to negative two, the y of t, the solution's y of t. Look at the second derivative of y is negative. That means the solution y of t here has to be um, a concave down solutions, right? And then from here, you have a concave up. And it's positive, that means you have a concave up. Negative, you have a concave down. Positive, you have a concave up. Negative, you have a concave down. And positive, you have a concave up. So the concavity of y of t depends on the second derivative of y, and the, the second derivative of y depends on f of y and f prime of y. Once we come up with this table, then we can try to sketch some solution curves to this differential equations using phase line and using the knowledge of uh, the concavity that we just learned in this table. Okay. So in this line right here, you see that I have three different equilibrium solutions. So I equals to negative two. And we know that this is a sink. This is a um, source. And this is a node, okay? And then if I start and I wanna, I wanna mark square root of two and negative square root of two somewhere here. So I have square root of twos right here. I should have negative square root of two right here. Okay. As you can see that if I, if my initial values is above two, let's go from negative infinity to negative two. If my initial value starts at the point less than negative two, then y of t should be a decreasing functions and concave down. So decreasing and concave down, which looks like this. And then from the, if I start at a point in between negative two and negative square root of two, I have an increasing functions and concave up. So increasing and concave up should looks like this. Increasing concave up. I wanna change the color so it's easy to see increasing concave up, okay? If I start at the point between negative two and zero, I have an increasing function, but concave down, increasing, but concave down. That should looks like this. Increasing, but concave down, okay? And from zero to two, I have increasing, and concave up. We change a different color so it's easy to see. Increasing concave up, increasing concave down should looks like this. Okay, last one from two to positive infinity, I have a decreasing and concave up. Decreasing but concave up looks like that. Okay, now I go to my graph here, okay. If I wanna see the table at the same time, so it's easier for me to see. So I start at this point. Less than negative two, my function will be a functions decreasing and concave down. From 
2 to negative 2 to negative square root root of 2, I have a function that is increasing on k up. And after my functions concave and concave down. And it's rich, it's riches to the next equilibrium solutions. Okay. Then if I start at a point between negative square root of two to zero, my function should be just increasing and concave down. Okay. And if I start at a point in between zero and, and square root of two, zero and square root of two, my function should be increasing and concave up. From here, increasing concave up. And as it's passed, the square root of two value is to change to increasing and concave down like this. All right. And if I start at a point between square root of two and two, my function will be increasing and concave down. Okay, its approach is to uh, the next equilibrium. Point that is greater than two, then my function will be decreasing function and concave up. So here are some solution curves for different initial values for this differential equations. Again, the differential equation that we're looking at is y prime equals to four minus y squared times y squared. This is an autonomous equations. Okay. And we now that we learn how to find equilibrium solutions, identify uh, their types, and we learn how to use the sign of f of y and the sign of f prime of y in order to determine the sign of y double prime. And once we determine the sign of y double prime, we will know what is the concavity of the solution curve y of t based on these signs, right? Again, you use the sign of f of y and f prime of y to determine the sign of f uh, of y double prime. And you're going to use the sign of y double prime to determine the concavity of y. And you combining f of y, the sign of f of y telling you if whether the solution is decreasing or increasing and combining with the concavity to come up with the solution curve. For example, uh, negative as f of y sign will indicate the function is decreasing and um, the concavity is concave down. That means this should be the curve, the decreasing and concave down solutions. Okay, so this is, we just finished a problem when we want to analyze the solution curves for a autonomous equation using first phase line, using concavity, and using some of the uh, initial values on each of these intervals. So on each of the intervals on this table here, you wanna pick a point, then you will sketch a solution curve that will go through that initial value. Uh, satisfying all of these conditions here. And this should be a some solution curves for this autonomous equations.